Blessed is the one who makes the Lord his trust. Lift up your face unto God, and light shall shine upon your ways. Well, welcome to our service today. And we're still travelling through the alphabet of non-subscribing Presbyterianism. And today we've reached the letter P. And P stands for those essential items of church furniture, pews. But let's begin with a hymn, which Laura will play for us. today comes from the Psalms. It's Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city which is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel 
to give thanks to the name of God. There thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brethren and companions sake I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. And here ends our reading. Well, Psalm 122 is one of my favourite psalms. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I think we should be glad when we come into church. We should be glad for the opportunity to worship and praise together. And we should have that feeling of gladness. Uh, other, other translations say rejoice, and rejoice is good too, but, but just being glad about being together in church is a good thing, and we should be glad. Now, one of the things we take for granted uh, when we come to church uh, is that we'll have somewhere to sit, unless I suppose it's a really big uh, congregation. But we come into church and we expect to be able to sit down and we often like to sit in our traditional pew, in our family pew maybe, as we see it. And pews are something we expect to see in church. Now pews can take different forms, but we always have them. Uh, although there has been in some places a modern tendency to take the pews out and replace them with chairs. And there's so much a part of our worship that we expect to see them, we expect to have them. Because if we, if we were Orthodox Christians, that is Orthodox uh, with a capital O, like Russian Orthodox or Greek Orthodox, uh, when we went to church there'd be no seats at all. You'd be expected to stand uh, throughout the worship. And hundreds of years ago, it tended to be the case uh, in most uh, parish worship, the churches didn't have pews, really hundreds of years ago, that was the case. Pews weren't the norm, and in a sense, uh, the old medieval parish church was rather like a modern multi-purpose church, in that there were no seats uh, cluttering up the space, but there was a, a space that could be used uh, by, in different ways by the local community. But gradually, pews or something like them became the norm. And within our tradition, in the earliest days, uh, what was the norm was the box pew. In other words, pews that were closed in with a door uh, to go in by and a little area that was, was sealed off and was a self-contained unit. And the reason for that really was because everybody had to pay a pew rent in our churches in the 18th century. That's how the church was funded. And often there wasn't enough space uh, in the churches and so there was uh, a real uh, need to keep your space and to pay for it. Uh, some churches in the 18th century, many of them, would have pews that were kept just for the poor. But most people were paying rent for their pew. So a box pew has a door. It has its own entrance. And a box pew can be really any shape. If you look at 18th century churches like Downpatrick or Dunmurray, the church really is filled with box pews and they're often not regular in their design, uh, they're often of different sizes and the idea behind them was to fill as many seats as possible into that church because in our tradition the, the focus of worship wasn't any kind of right, it wasn't to, to witness uh, something happen. It was mainly to listen to the word of God being preached. So the aim behind the design of our churches was to fit in as many people as possible. And this often meant that the pews could be placed where people would sit and they'd have their back to the minister. Or they certainly wouldn't be facing the minister. The only thing that mattered uh, was that they could hear the minister. They could hear what was being preached. And so here in Downpatrick, for instance, up until the 1960s, the pews went all the way right up uh, under, under the pulpit. The church was, was filled 
uh, with pews. And this, this was the same in most of our churches. Now the box pew was a very 18th century thing. And as time went on, as new churches were built, or as old churches were redesigned, uh, the box pews tended to be replaced by long straight pews. The type of thing we normally think of when we think of a pew. Often in some of the churches which, were, which would be described as barn shape, which were just basically rectangles, they would also do what's called turn the interior. So a pulpit that might be on the long wall would be moved to one of the end walls and all the, all the box pews taken out and rows and rows of pews uh, put in their place so everyone was facing the same way, everyone was looking the same way. That happened a lot. And it happened in, in many churches uh, when they were built. So, for instance, clock has pews like that that were put in in 1837. Uh, a church like All Souls Church has pews uh, in it, which date, I think, from the 1870s. They're older uh, than the church. Uh, but they were brought from the old meeting house and put into uh, the new meeting house, the new church, which is like a, uh, like a parish church, but it has uh, pews which are of an older design. And in Bali, uh, in about 1912, the interior was totally redesigned, and the old box pews were taken away in Bali and replaced by uh, the kind of modern pews uh, we know today. Now, a key thing to pews, particularly the box pews, but in fact for all pews generally, uh, was the need to have them numbered. You knew which was your pew by its number, and you paid for pew number 23 or whatever. That's the way it worked. Now we can still see pew numbers in a lot of churches, and it's always interesting uh, to find them and look at the design, and uh, look at the painstaking work that went into putting them in. There are still pew numbers here in Downpatrick, but only upstairs. And in Belize, when they... Uh, reconfigured the interior, they took away the old box pews and put new pews in. They also reused the old pews. And if you know where to look, you can still see the numbers that were painted on the old box pews hidden away in cupboards and in some of the ceiling here and there. So pews are important. If we didn't have them, we'd have nowhere to sit. I don't think we'd like to stand through our services. And I don't think for us, removing our pews and replacing them with chairs is something we'd want to do. They are part of our heritage. And in many cases, generations of faithful people have sat in them before us. But the most important thing about a pew is the person who sits in it. A church is nothing without people. And we should be glad when we come into the house of the Lord. We should be glad that we can come and sit together and stand to sing together in our pews. So we can give a bit of thought to our pews, a bit of thankfulness for those who designed and built them and made them part of the distinctive architecture of our churches. But above all, let's be thankful that we have that chance to come together, to worship God together and to offer up our praises as congregations in our churches. Well, let's join together now in the fellowship of prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the friendship we find with each other and with you. Thank you that you are always around when we need you and you never get tired of us. Thank you that you hold us together with your love. As we think of others who perhaps have no friends, we thank you that you are always present in our lives, always there with a loving, helping hand, always there to pick up the shattered pieces of our lives, always there to love us when nobody cares, always there to give us strength when we are weak and when we stumble. May we always be thankful for your gift of love. These and all our prayers we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us in our service today, and thank you to Laura for playing for us today. And Laura will close our worship with a hymn in a moment. But let's just close our service now with the benediction. Let us pray. Now may the blessing of God be upon us. May his truth direct us and his love sustain us. And may he preserve our going out and our coming in from this time forth forevermore. Amen.